Our next speaker is Dr. Christian Seidel. And he is working as a senior data analyst and um, will show us the Volkswagen take on quantum computing. And this is also our next topic. So now again in English, Christian, the stage is yours. Warm welcome. <laughs> Hello, um, quantum computing, crazy shit, yeah. Um, I'm talking about what Volkswagen's doing with quantum computing, give a little insight, and why do we do this? So since some years we see these um, headlines spooking uh, through various, um, uh, various magazines, publications, so we wanted to find out is this a hype or a real thing? Why do we need quantum computing at all? Why do we think about quantum computing? Uh, the fact is, there are some uh, problems that are so complex that classical, even supercomputers cannot solve them or need a long time for these. Um, if one of these examples is if we have for example, here in exponential growth, um, this gets quite fast, very hard for quantum computers. The theory says, due to uh, some uh, quantum effects like superposition, entanglement, and tunneling, it is expected that quantum computers are faster than uh, um, classical computers. But that's a theory. So there are some state-of-the-art algorithms that already showed uh, quantum speed up. But um, again, these, these algorithms only exist on a piece of paper because the uh, quantum computers are missing. Shor's algorithm for prime factorization is one of these things. So hardware is needed. Talking about hardware, since a few years, um, uh, some hardware pops out of the labs and is even commercially available. 
um, right now, there are two different um, architecture, the quantum annealer that um, more or less um, solves optimization problems. So you have to turn your calculation into an icing form we see here on the left. Um, we can think about this like um, transforming your problem into an energy landscape where you have your nice Alps um, with high mountains and valleys. High mountains are um, bad solutions, valleys are good solutions, and the lowest valley is your um, optimal solution. There you want to go to, this is what you want to reach. Um, one um, effect how to get there is um, this called tunneling. A completely different approach is um, uh, the gate model. Here you create um, certain gates, quantum gates. Uh, it's similar to how a um, classical computer works. That's why this um, model is often um, called a model for a universal quantum computer. Nevertheless, um, what you need to do here is like you have a Hadamard gate that creates a superposition or a CNOT gate where you control um, that controls two um, qubits um, where you do on a second qubit a bit flip. This is what we see here in the, in the, um, in the um, left, uh, on the right on the bottom. So these two architectures um, are available right now. And um, the question now, of course, is what can a quantum computer do better? Or where can I use a quantum computer? And um, we have these um, uh, identified these three topics by now. It's machine learning, meaning um, can I use the quantum computer on the one hand to optimize classical um, machine learning algorithms, like um, creating a better um, uh, setting for my neural network, or can I create create algorithms that at the end um, make use of these new quantum states that come out of the, of the um, quantum computer. Optimization is another um, aspect and simulation, of course. I will talk about this. Last year on CBIT, um, we started um, this whole adventure with the traffic flow optimization on a quantum annealer. That was done with a public available data set, um, the T-Drive trajectory from Microsoft Research. It's roughly 10,000 taxis in Beijing. Um, and the question here was, can we optimize the traffic in a way that um, we do not have a traffic jam? The result was, yes, we could do this, not for the whole city, but for a certain area. And we showed that real world problems can be solved on a quantum computer. But, of course, there's room for improvement. And we wanted to find out what else can we do with this. Material simulation is uh, another aspect. So um, simulating molecules, for example, is very complex. On the long run, um, the simulation could be used for um, creating new batteries or new compounds, new fabrics, medicine, all this kind <clears throat> of stuff, but um, this is something where we wanted to say, can we already do something today with this? So we started with a um, small molecule, just a hydrogen molecule. Of course, it's uh, it's a small thing. We see on the on the uh, right side, um, we have. On the blue line, the classical approximation, Hartree-Fock approximation for the quantum chemistrist um, amongst you. Um, on the bottom, the black line is the exact solution. And um, these are calculated classically. What we did with the D-Wave right now is um, we reached at, uh, for at least uh, some, uh, some uh, distance between the atoms, the classical approximation, and later on, you can see the red line moves towards the exact solution. So a next step now, of course, is um, since a hydrogen molecule is a quite easy molecule, next step is to um, try larger molecules, find out 
what's this um, gap here between um, the blue line and the, and the black line? Why is the D wave moving from the blue line towards the black line and stuff like this? The idea, of course, behind this is can we, in a, in a distant future, simulate whole batteries on a quantum computer in order to avoid always um, uh, creating uh, new models, um, exchanging molecule A for molecule B, wait, um, I don't know, some time until, um, until we actually can measure something. Why just simulate it? Why don't just simulate it and um, check if it's feasible? But this is something for the long run. What we showed here, in small term, um, it's doable, um, but it needs, of course, improvement. Finite element method, another example. Here we thought about um, wind can produce some noise on a car mirror, for example. Is there a way to uh, um, create an optimization problem to reduce the noise inside the car by um, changing the shape of, um, of this mirror. Of course, we did not use a mirror. A mirror in this case is uh, too complex for the current quantum computer hardware. We um, used a ball, and this ball um, we even simplified to only roughly 100 surface elements. But what we got out here, and this is um, shown here again on the, on the right, on the bottom, is that we could create some shape that optimizes the noise um, away from the car. Nobody would create a mirror like this, that's obvious. But um, once the quantum computers are stronger, this is a way to uh, um, do simulations or calculations with a quantum computer on, uh, on a large scale, for example. Another um, example for, uh, from the area machine learning, um, non-matrix, uh, non-adjective uh, matrix factorization. Could we approximate a matrix, or can we approximate a matrix to um, get some um, dimension reduction? The goal is if we have an approximation and compare this to the original matrix, there is, of course, always a, a distance, a, an error. Can we reduce this error? Possible areas um, for this is uh, text mining, uh, spectral data analytics, um, audio signals, uh, speech denoising, for example, uh, recommender systems. So um, what we found out, again, small matrices can be calculated on a quantum computer, nevertheless, just small matrices. So the question, of course, is what do we need to, uh, to do larger matrices? On the one hand, probably we need to uh, um, adapt our algorithm. On the other hand, of course, larger hardware. So um, we did some uh, publications so far, because one of the important tasks for us is um, we want to do our research openly. The traffic flow optimization, um, for this at least we got um, quite some feedback, and I'm personally quite proud that um, the University of Tohoku um, presented uh, our algorithm for um, a tsunami evacuation. They transferred it, um, analyzed instead of cars, um, mobile phone data, and um, used this to optimize um, evacuation paths. This is a quite cool example um, that shows that all these algorithms, all these idea that, ideas that pop out can be used for something else as well. So, um, an outlook. Um, um, what can we do with this, with quantum computers? Um, we, as I said, we identified um, quite some potential in machine learning, simulation, and optimization. So, but our, our areas of interest for um, Volkswagen is 
fundamental algorithm research. So as I said before, we want to find out, can we create new algorithms that take the power of a quantum computer that are not able to be run on a classical computer? And for example, um, enhance machine learning with this. Intelligent mobility, another example. The traffic flow optimization was one um, thing. Smart charging solutions, uh, maybe another. Logistics, again, in logistics, we really get a lot of complex problems um, that could be addressed um, uh, with a quantum computer by distributing, uh, for example, um, uh, parts um, uh, to different vendors and so on, or suppliers. Smart factory, um, always an important topic, um, uh, even if you um, uh, at least if you're talking about um, industry 4.0 or I don't like the term, but um, Internet of Things is probably <laughs> more, more, um, a more useful term. But here again, all our um, um, production lines and so on, they will be at some time entirely connected and produce a lot of data. So we need to work with this data, and this um, needs um, a lot of computational power. Autonomous driving, another topic. Um, where we need, um, on the long run, uh, strong, uh, strong computation and power. And, of course, um, to, to announce this on the, for, the, um, for the session that uh, follows my talk, they will talk in detail about autonomous driving. So if you have questions about this, you will, they will probably or surely be answered there. For more insights, I just had a few minutes, so for more insights, please stop by at the Volkswagen booth in Hall 25. And now, if you have questions, then simply shoot. For shooting, we have our <laughs> special tool, slider.com, and we already received one question. Could quantum, first of all, thank you. Big applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Could quantum computing be a security pro problem for blockchains? Um, let's say it this way. In the moment our quantum computer evolves, I would say no. Um, but on the long run, um, Probably yes. So on the long run, um, this I, I mentioned Schor's algorithm before. Schor's algorithm is um, for prime factorization, an algorithm that can um, break current encryption. But you need very strong quantum computers for this, gate model quantum computers. It is said that you need about um, 30 to 300 million qubits for such a system. Currently, we are in the area of 50 to uh, 72 qubits, so it's really far off. Um, but of course, on the long run, we need to think about new encryption systems that then, of course, need to be implemented in the blockchain as well. So mm -hmm. not for now, probably in, I don't know, 30 years. Okay. And the next one is uh, about how do you control the input of data? Can you make sure that it's transparent which information is used by the computer to guarantee the best possible result? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Let's say it this way. Um, what the, the quantum computer is a probabilistic system. It's not a deterministic system. So at the end, you do your calculation not just once, but multiple times. And I explained the, the energy landscape with um, your mountains and valleys. And if you get multiple times to your minimum, then um, this is your, your solution, of course, in a current state to really make sure that this minimum is the actual global minimum, you need to do comparison with uh, another classical system where, we, where you know, um, uh, yeah, I reached this, and then you compare. 
And what is your vision uh, in, in terms of uh, quantum computing? Maybe for the next, I don't know, two, three, four years? Well, um, the vision is, um, goes in that direction. We want to, we, as Volkswagen, we do not, do not want to build a quantum computer. We want to use it. So um, we want to investigate in, on the one hand, use cases, proto-apps that show potential for quantum computers once they are strong enough. I um, mentioned a few by now. Um, on the other hand, of course, doing fundamental research to uh, develop algorithms, again, once the, uh, once the hardware is strong enough, really show benefit on, uh, on computational power. And what do you see in other countries in terms of quantum? Um, uh, <laughs> The question probably should be, <laughs> Compared what do I not Germany. see in Germany? <laughs> but um, um, in other countries, I see a lot. I mean, um, the, the quantum computers that exist do not um, come from Europe. So um, the D-Wave, for example, is from Canada. Um, IBM um, created one in the US and um, in, a, in their research lab in, in Zurich. Google is doing one. China is um, investing tremendous amount of money in uh, um, uh, building quantum computers. So um, the European flagship that was announced um, uh, one and a half years ago and the first round um, just finished um, is a good way to, uh, um, uh, to go there. But um, from my point of view, we, if we want to build quantum computers in Europe, we need more. We need more corporations with um, industry and research um, and more open-minded you, <laughs> you mentioned the corporations and the open-mindedness of people, but what do, you need, uh, what do we need more? Maybe you mentioned uh, the financial, the money part. Is it that? Why mm. we are so... It, well, it's, uh, of course, research is always um, it needs money. Of mm. course, you need, to, uh, you need money for research, but at the end, it's, it's not just... Uh, uh, focusing on hardware, it's focusing on software as well. So what's kind of missing is um, a, or probably not missing, but something that is just about to, be, to grow is a community of um, people that actually say, yes, we want to do something with a quantum computer. This could be a use case. This could be a use case. This could be a software. Um, we need... Um, um, programming languages. Microsoft, for example, they um, created their Q-sharp um, programming language for their quantum computer once it's out. Um, it's, uh, they already announced that it will probably take until 2025 until they come out with a quantum computer, but at least they already create an infrastructure to work on this quantum computer. So this infrastructure, um, this is something that needs to be set up and Everybody needs to, to push join it. in. Yeah. <laughs> and do we have already the, the experts in the companies, or do we need more to cooperate with other countries? Um, well, difficult, hard to say. Um, of course, cooperation with um, other countries is always helpful. Cooperation with other companies is mm -hmm. helpful. Um, our team, for example, consists of um, people in Munich, in the data lab, and people in the code lab in San Francisco. So this is already co okay. cross-country cooperation. Um, yeah, this helps a lot. Okay, thank you, Christian, for You're your welcome. insightful talk. And thanks you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.